steps and what I'd like to show in this video is the first steps in how to build a car model. What I'll do is first I start with the cube and I put it in the origin. This is just going to be a placeholder for me. Next I'm going to go find some images on the web that are going to act as references. I'm going to use those references to create a couple image planes within Silo. Then from that I'll start modeling and my technique is going to be to model from a single side of a cube and that's why I started off with this cube here. No, I didn't finish my model. This is a reference photo of the Austin Healy Sprite. It's very close to the original original form of it. It's got this great feature of these bug eyes. Uh, originally when they designed it they wanted this to sit inside the main body but it was too much of an engineering challenge. It was very difficult to get it to work so they decided to just keep this feature on top has a great grill that's all cut up. It has these uh, this mesh across the front. There's also some nice features of these turn signals and the original original tires. A lot of great little details. And so I've got a whole bunch of images I found off the web. This is a reconstruction. A couple older shots. One that was kind of decomposed. I like to have at least one black and white image. In case when I'm modeling I get distracted by the colors or I'm already jumping ahead and thinking about texturing, this will kind of pull me back a little bit. Interior shots, the motor, and I'll use these to get a better idea of the specific parts. The great exploded view, rear detail, front detail, and I've used some of these images. I took them into Photoshop and put it on a grid put it on a grid and then just painted my lines. The reason why I did that is often difficult using resource photos with a lot of contrast or other elements in the background to really see where your edges are. So I built this in Photoshop and then I'm just going to cut it right down the middle to create my two reference planes within Silo. So let me jump back into Silo. Back in Silo the first thing I like to do is work in a three pane format. I have my right view and my front view and I don't use a whole lot in the rest of my silo interface just the scene editor and the material editor and you'll see why I have both of those open in just a second so in my front view what I want to try and do is I want to put that image that I just showed you that I built in Photoshop created as a viewport image so I'm going to set viewport image and I already have this piece cut up it's going to be my front view I'm going to do the same in my right view set viewport image And I still have my placeholder in the origin here. And what you notice right away is that if I really started to model this, it would be very difficult for me to see exactly what's going on while I'm working on the main body of the, of the model. As I'm rotating around, I can't really see what it looks like compared to these views. Of course, when I'm in these views, it's very easy to see what's going on and how it might start to subdivide. But when I'm in that main perspective view, and that's just the way I like to work, I like to be in this perspective view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple image planes. And I'm going to use the cube that I've already created here and the material editor to make a new texture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to name this texture very simply front and take that same image that I just mapped and apply it. Make sure you click on the object and I hit apply. And what that does is it pushes through the entire cube. And I want to just get rid of the faces that I don't need. The advantage here is that now I can move this around. I can move it forward and backwards and as I'm starting to model I can see it in the main plane. But if we notice, it doesn't really line up to our front view that we've already mapped along this front plane. So what I like to do is use our scene editor. Actually we have just one cube created but that's going to be our front panel. Let's call it front plane because it's effectively an image plane within Silo. And I'm just going to use these tabs here to shift the opacity. What I want is ghosted shade view which I could also use this pull down menu to go straight to ghosted shade mode. So then once I have it lined up, this is a lot like 
the way you might work in Photoshop where you're just going to use overlay a layer on overlay to line up one layer to another make sure that it matches so I'm just going to get it lined up right here and now that I have it set up I'm just going to back it off the grid very slightly I do that because as I'm modeling let's create another cube and put it in the center here as I'm modeling I don't want this image plane to get in the way the advantage now since I have an image plane is that if I decided to turn it off or make it more opaque or just get it out of the way completely I can do that I can also move it around freely now you can do that with our viewport or display using display set viewport image but it's not as dynamic so I like to do that once I have it lined up when I'm back in my front view I really don't need to leave that there so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that viewport image so that's now gone and I'm gonna set up my other views in the exact same way so once I've set up these views notice I've called one front plane and the other side plane I can also choose to lock these down if I lock them down in my scene editor then they won't be clickable so when I'm working on my model I won't accidentally click on these planes and move things around so especially in my initial phase of model building I want to keep these locked so once I have those in place I'm going to create a base cube. I'm just going to use my freestanding or my perspective view. Now, the method that I'm going to use here is I'm going to model one half of the car and then switch into mirror mode. I often shift between my different views, whatever makes the most sense for me, and I'm going to start to model and when I start to model I want to take one section of the car in this case I'm going to start with the door and just start to get it lined up I can zoom in get this a little bit lined up a little closer and I use the universal manipulator so I have all my options in one place get that lined up as close as possible and I want to shift it to the outer edge. I'm going to give myself a, a little bit of room to bend this along the top as I'm modeling it, but I don't want it to be too far over. Shift back into my side view, and I'll just start to extrude using that edge. And I'll grab the other edge and do the same thing. I'll just start to extrude, and I want to stick pretty close to the shape that I already have here in my image plane and give myself some edges to extrude extrude down to the bottom I want to try and stick as close as possible I can to the shape but also I want to keep my edges consistent and there's a little curvature there so that can come up a bit I notice as I start modeling across here that I might need a little bit more geometry So I'm going to select these and I'm going to cut this face so that I have more polygons there. And if you notice on my side view, I'm trying to keep pretty consistent to what we have on our Photoshop drawing. But it's difficult to see. As I'm starting to make this model, let's call it car main. I'll use my scene editor to shift into wireframe mode or ghosted shade mode where I can see the drawing behind. And in that way I'm going to continue to build the side of the car. And I'm just going to use simple extrusions. From this point, just go ahead and pull forward. And I'll just continue to build along the front and also along the back and I just shift in my views pretty constantly it's so whatever makes the most sense and you see if I stretch too far along here I'm going to distort this whole side so I want to give myself a little bit more geometry pull it up to this point pan over a little bit and in this fashion I'm going to continue to build to match my existing drawing once I've extruded planes 
to create a whole side of the car, I'm ready to start extruding along the edge. What I'll do here is I'll start to grab edges, or I could just grab the entire loop, and I do that by shifting, shift clicking on two adjacent edges and then grabbing using Alt E to select the entire loop. What I notice is that I have a couple pieces that are missing here. Go ahead and grab them at the very back of the car and I'm just going to start to extrude. And what I want to do is I want to shift between my front view and my perspective view to be able to see where my extrusions will take me. So I'm going to start to extrude, make this a little bit larger, extrude again. I'm going to try and get as many extrusions in as possible. This is lined up to the edge of that light, which I'm going to need some geometry there. Make that a little bigger. Extrude again to the other edge of the light. And extrude just one more time so we get closer to the center. I like where we're starting to go with that. It's getting a little bit more definition. Once I have it where I feel like I'm ready to mirror it, I'll mirror it across the axis. Set up on world negative x. Actually, we want to shift it over to world x. And then mirror it across. I'm just going to shift into my front view on the large pane here just to make sure, or I could just click into here. Make sure that we're lined up. Not really. That's a little closer. And at this point I'll start to toggle back and forth through my subdivision levels. And I'll really just try and stay to no subdivision, one, possibly two subdivision levels to see how our progress is on the car. And that's starting to get the kind of shape we're looking for. We'll close that. And while I'm clicked on the model, our main model, I want to reduce the opacity. I actually want to shift it into ghosted shade mode so we have a better idea. We can see directly through and see that front view plane. So I have some geometry I'm going to need to get rid of in the front here because we do have this open grill. delete those. Now notice I'm going to need a little bit more geometry along the edge. We can do that a little bit later. Go ahead and delete all of these. And I need to get a little closer. And because I mirrored across that central axis, notice when I click on one of these points, it corresponds to the other side, which is really handy when you're modeling. I'll just move point by point. This stage I'm, I'm going to try and keep my polygons to a minimum and keep them all in quads if at all possible. I might have some tries. But I want to get just the basic blocking and the basic shape. And what you want to try and do is do your basic blocking. Get your overall shape. And then you can start to focus on the topology and the detail and then into your tweaking. But this is very important to just get your base shape. I like where we are. What I'd like to do in the next steps is I'd like to show how to put a little bit more detail into the car and create more dimension to it. Right now we have a base shape, but we need to do some extrusions along these edges, create a better wheel well, even on this front grill section. Give it more definition, make it feel more like a car.